Welcome to the Time to Fly podcast. It's time to give your business wings and take flight to achieve more impact, influence, and income with unique perspectives, tools, and tips from successful entrepreneurs and business professionals to help your business fly. Here to educate, encourage, and entertain you with their own unique perspectives and experience, plus sharing anecdotes of growing up as cowgirls. Here's your host, Nicole Homont. Welcome to this episode of the Time to Fly podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Homont, changing it up for 2020. First off, I want to give a shout out to some of our listeners across the United States and Canada but also Australia, Germany, Italy, Taiwan, South Africa, the list goes on. I'm truly blown away by all of the different listeners we have throughout the world. When Jill and I started this podcast a year and a half ago, I had no idea that we would impact so many different people. The list goes on, but I do want to say a thank you from the bottom of my heart to every single person who has listened to our podcast and who has shared it. We truly appreciate it. I know I truly appreciate you doing that for us. Now, I am going to mix it up a little bit in 2020. I have a new routine in my life. My son, Lincoln, was finally off the wait list to an awesome charter school here in Tucson. So now, five days a week, I have an hour and 10 minute round trip to and from school. Thankfully, I'm carpooling on most of those days, so it's only once a day I have to do the hour and 10 minutes, but that is giving me a lot more dedicated time to listening to audiobooks, and I have been listening to them and getting through the books a lot faster now, and I want to start sharing with you my takeaways from the books, and maybe it'll be something that you yourself will want to read or listen to. I will say that having the dedicated time to listen on a daily basis has given me the opportunity to listen to a lot more books and I am very excited about it. I actually started the year off with the seminal favorite, Think and Grow Rich. It's something that I have the physical copy of and have tried to read a couple of different times. I honestly had never made it all of the way through, but I did listen to the audiobook, and amazingly enough, pretty much all of the steps that are in there, I have automatically been doing because a lot of the things outlined in Think and Grow Rich are found in other books in just different formats. Definitely re-listen to that one if you've never listened to it in the past 10 years or if you've never read it. It's a lot of food for thought. And then you start going, oh, well, that book that I listened to is based off of that step. And this book is based off of that. The book I want to talk about today, though, is actually called Indistractable by Nir Eyal. Now, Nir has a couple different best-selling books out there. And Indistractable goes along the lines of time management, which is something that I'm a big proponent of. To me, working 20 hours a week and getting as much as I can done in that time is a goal of mine. I like to be able to have time for my family and my friends and have time for myself to do a few of the things that I like to do. Plus, I also like to try out new recipes for my family and having the evenings open gives me that opportunity to test out those new recipes. So being indistractable while I'm at work is a big thing for me. I actually shut my phone off. My family can get a hold of me through the Hangouts in Google on my personal email. And that's the way I run my business is I will work on a project for 45 minutes, get as much done as I can on it, work on the house for 15 minutes since I do have the luxury of working from home, and then check any emails or phone calls I need to respond to and then rinse and repeat. And I do that from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. So Indistractable was a book that I wasn't really sure that I needed to listen to, but I decided to do it anyway because somebody that I'd worked with in the past had recommended it. So I started listening to it and I agree with a lot of the concepts. Time blocking being one of the biggest ones. I call it batching. He calls it blocking. But you set aside time to do specific tasks. And he suggests that in your calendar that you actually block out when you're going to work when you're going to play, when you're going to do nothing, or just kind of leave it up to the whims of the day, and to make sure that you're spending the time that you want to be spending that's moving you closer to your goals. So whether you work for someone or whether you work for yourself, you can use the time blocking to set definite boundaries of when you are doing different things. One of the biggest stories that I took away from him, which resonated with me, was when it is time to play with your child, 
don't have the phone next to you because it is all too easy to pick up the phone and reply to that text message or reply to that email right quick instead of focusing on your child. And the same goes for your family or your friends. I know it is so easy to pick up the phone and try to just, oh, here, let me take care of this right quick, or I'm going to look that up. And then you get sucked into looking at an email or a text message or a Facebook post. And the next thing you know, the hour that you had allotted for spending with them, 45 minutes of it is spent on nothing, not connecting with that real life person next to you. So my challenge to you is to do some time blocking. When it's playtime, it's playtime. Put the phone down. When it's work time, it's work time. Don't have Facebook open unless you have to. And another big takeaway I had from his book was remove apps from your phone that are distractions. So if there are games that you get sucked into or the Facebook feed scroll that you get sucked into, maybe you need to remove the app from your phone so you only do it during designated times. One thing that I suggest is if you are on Facebook and you're growing your business on there, yes, you need to have Facebook on your phone, but perhaps you just need the pages manager So you're only going into your page or your group and working in there versus mindlessly scrolling the newsfeed. Now, if you have time set aside to do whatever you want, and at that time you choose to go through Instagram or you choose to go through Facebook or any of the other myriad of apps out there, then that is a good time to do it. Not saying you shouldn't be on there, but make sure you manage your time. I personally use a lot of timers. If I say I'm only going to watch something for 15 minutes, I set a timer for 15 minutes. If I'm only going to work on the house for cleaning the house for 10 minutes, that's about all I can stand is 10 minutes at a time. I set a timer and I work for 10 minutes. So take that into consideration if you really would like to make sure that you stay on task. And one other thing from indistractable is actually what indistractable means or the root of the word means. Traction. That's where indistractable comes from. So if you are looking to build your business, you want to have traction in it. So anything that comes in as an indistraction is removing you from that goal. Now that same principle can be applied to working out, which I definitely need to get more into, or it can also be described to building closer relationships with your family and friends or building your business. So think about what it means to have traction in the area that you want it to be and what it means to have indistraction. And if those are things that resonate with you, then maybe the book Indistractable by Nir Eyal will be something you'll want to read. We're going to take a quick sponsor break now. When we come back, I'm going to be talking about ADA compliance, SSLs, and the privacy policy on websites. And yes, they may sound boring, but it is something you need. This episode is sponsored by Shield Bar Marketing saving service-based businesses time, money, and frustration. More than just a designer, but a partner helping you develop a consistent online and offline strategy. Hello, Time to Fly podcast listeners. This is Nicole Holmont back for the second half of this episode. I want to briefly talk to you about three things that should be on your website that you probably don't know to ask about. They are ADA compliancy, SSLs, and a privacy policy. Now, I'll go further into these and hopefully explain them to you so you understand what they are. Of course, if you have any more questions, just find me on Facebook or LinkedIn or send me an email and I will do my best to help answer your questions. One of the newest things out there is ADA compliance, Adults with Disabilities Act compliancy on your website. Now, a lot of people are like, well, I don't need to do that because I'm not a big company and I really don't have potential clients that would fall under that order. Well, nowadays, you have to have ADA compliancy. It's one of those things that, unfortunately, there's unscrupulous lawyers out there who are like, oh, hey, this company isn't ADA compliant, so therefore, we're going to sue them. And this has been going on for about the last two years now, and it's really becoming mainstream. So basically, with ADA compliancy, we need to make sure that all of your alt tags on your pictures are typed in properly, which also helps with your search engine optimization. That's a topic for another day. And also that your fonts are readable and that you have different policies in place to make it ADA compliant. Easily put, accessibility compliance is a commitment towards making your online digital content accessible to as many persons as possible, irrespective of their abilities or disabilities. So we can help make 
websites ADA compliant by doing different things on there in the backside of it. If you work in WordPress, there's actually some different plugins that can help you create that ADA compliant website. And then you also get an icon on the front of your website that shows that you're compliant. There's basically four different levels of compliancy. So depending on how stringent you want to get, you can really go from a very basic ADA compliance to every little thing on your website has the compliance to it. So just depending on your budget and your clients served, you're at least going to want to have the basic ADA compliance in place. And that also includes having a written ADA compliance policy. So if people have more questions, they can access that there. So yes, it is something new, but it is definitely something you're going to want to start considering. And if you haven't built a website yet, be sure when you visit with your website designer to ask them about ADA compliancy to make sure that you are making the best use of your time and your money by creating a website that is accessible to everybody. Now, yes, at this point in time, it does only apply to American websites, the United States of America, but it could definitely be spreading across the entire world sooner than later. If you have any questions, like I said, feel free to drop me a line on LinkedIn or Facebook or send me an email. Another thing that you should have, and most websites do, but people don't know that they need to ask their website designer for this, is an SSL, otherwise known as a secure socket layer. So when you're looking at a website in the upper left corner where the domain name is up in the browser URL, there should be a padlock. If there is not a padlock, that means that the website is not secure. You need to have an SSL installed Whomever is hosting your website should be able to help you with that. You're going to need to have access to your hosting account and also to where your domain is registered in order to make sure it is hooked up properly on the back side of it. A couple reasons why you want to have the SSL. And the biggest reason is about a year and a half ago, Google started penalizing sites that do not have SSLs on them. So you will not show in search engine rankings as easily as those who are secure. And another thing is for those savvy consumers who know that you should have a padlock on your browser bar, they know that your site is not secure if it's not there, and they are less likely to give up their information, even if it's something as simple as a first name and an email address. So make sure you have an SSL installed on your website. Anytime you take a credit card, you have to have it. Anytime you take an email address, you should have it. And like I said, Savvy consumers are not going to give you their information if that SSL is not there in place because that encrypts the information that they're giving you as it transfers across the internet. So there's keys and things like that that are all in the backside that you don't get to see, but that all take place when you have that SSL. So it transfers data securely. Of course, if you're in any type of finances, you have to have that. You know, all the financial institutions have it, period, in a question. And there's different levels of encryption. You don't need to have like a Chase Bank level of encryption on your website, but you need to definitely make sure it's there. And some browsers, especially like Internet Explorer and Safari, they will actually flag that your site is not protected. And potential customers and clients have to click through and say, yes, I understand this site is not secure and I understand that risk. So you're going to have a lot of people who will not do that. So if you have questions on SSLs, go ahead and drop me a note on that too. The third thing that I want to make sure that you have on your website that you probably don't know you should ask for or make sure you have is called a privacy policy. So when you are collecting that data from that potential client or customer, whether it's just their email address or it's their phone number or whatever that is, you need to spell out in your privacy policy what you do with that information, whether or not you sell it to a third party and how you use it, whether you're retargeting People on Facebook, if they give you their email, because if you can do retargeting ads. So when you're on a website, it'll say, oh, we're going to drop some cookies on you. Do you accept? Then it also needs to make sure it has the privacy policy. So that way, you know that you may be subjected to other advertising if they choose to do that or that you are agreeing to give their email address in exchange to be on their email marketing list and all sorts of different things like that. So a privacy policy is a must on a website also. And like I said, it's definitely something you probably don't know to ask about. So that's why I wanted to bring it back to your attention. 
So you're going to answer questions such as, what personal information do we collect from people that visit our blog, website, or app? When do we collect that information? How do we use your information? How do we protect visitor information? Whether or not you use cookies. If there's a third-party disclosure, whether you do not or whether you do sell, trade, or otherwise transfer their information outside of your own organization. You also need to talk about if you use third-party links, if you're an affiliate to them. If you use Google, you need to talk about the advertising on there. If people want to opt out, you need to give them that option. So these are all different things that need to be in your privacy policy plus more. So if you have questions on those or if you decide you want to add a privacy policy to your website, let me know and we can sure help write one that's specific to your site and to your needs. So as we go back through looking at your websites for 2020, you need to make sure they are ADA compliant, that you have an SSL on there so information is secure, and that you also have a privacy policy detailing to people how you will use information that they submit through your website. If you have any of these questions, let me know. Otherwise, this is your host, Nicole Homont, signing off on this show of Time to Fly. Give your business wings. A big thank you to this episode's sponsor, Shield Bar Marketing. Be sure to visit shieldbar.com for all your marketing needs. Join our flock. Stay informed of all things Time to Fly by subscribing to our newsletter at timetoflypodcast.com. And be sure to tune in to our next show.